A lot of you have been waiting for this for a very long time, but today it is the time again. I am finally doing a tank review and today I am doing my review on the Oni, the tier 7 Japanese heavy tank. As I finish my grind towards the Oho, so let's get right into this. Greetings guys, it is Tokraft. Today I'm doing my review on the Oni, so let's get right into this. First of all, I'll be telling you guys everything about the mobility of this tank. After that, we'll take a look at its gun statistics. After the gun, it is time for the overall armor of this tank. We'll take a look at this armor model to find its weaknesses and its strong points. And after we've covered those three statistics, I will show you two parts of replays, one bottom tier game and one top tier game. And in this replays, I will tell you exactly how the Oni needs to be played and how you can know where to go on the battlefield. So first of all, as we can see, the Oni is one of the biggest, if not the biggest tank in the game. As you can see, it is very tall. Just that, that's all to say. This tank weighs a whopping 102 tons, which is just amazing. It is not as much as the tier 6 one, which is even weirder. As you can see, the tier 6 OI weighs 150 tons, which is just ridiculous. Anyway, it gets a very good engine power, 1200 uh, horsepower engine, but still the specific power to weight ratio still will not be very good. Um, a value around 12 is not the best uh, ever so climbing up hills will be very slow for you but it doesn't really matter because you will be slow anyways this thing only gets a top speed limit of 25 kilometers an hour so you're not gonna be bombing it around on the battlefield in any way shape or form also the backwards top speed is only 10 which is also not great it, it is just a, a sluggish heavy tank that's all you need to know also 19.2 uh, degrees a second traverse speed, which is also not very high. There are a lot of heavy tanks at tier 7, like the IS, who turn their tanks much quicker than that. So, the overall conclusion, is the mobility good? No, this is a very sluggish tier 7 heavy tank. So let's now take a look at the gun of the Oni. There's a lot of discussion if you should use the 100, uh, I think it's a 105 millimeter or if it's the, the derp gun, the 15 centimeter gun. Yeah it is and as you can see I choose to use the 105 millimeter I think it is. Yes it's a 105 millimeter. So let's compare these two guns and see um, if I can try and put you guys in my perspective why I have chosen to, to get the, the the 105 millimeter gun so let's take a look well we don't really need to look at the calibers but let's immediately take a look here we can immediately see this a r there's a huge rate of fire uh, difference as we can see here the 105 millimeter fires five shells a minute and this gun only fires 2.6 rounds a minute which is just atrocious that is the there's a horrible rate of fire but as it is a derp gun, you don't really need to aim at weak spots of enemy tanks, especially if you shoot HE with 75mm of penetration and you will splash 910 average damage on your enemy tanks. Um, if you calculate the DPM of this gun, you will end up with a very high number, but uh, that is of course not the real number. As this gun almost never penetrates its target, you will only do 200 to 300, sometimes 400 damage when you splash your enemy. So you will reload in roughly 15 seconds or so and if you reload in that time only doing 400 damage will end you up with a very bad DPM. So that's one of the points that I really don't like about the derp gun especially at tier 7. Keep that in mind only at tier 7. As we can see the 105mm gets an alright penetration for its tier 190mm. There are a lot of tanks at tier 7 heavy tanks that have got a better penetration. But still, 190 is not um, 
the amount for which you would say that it's not usable. It's a very well usable uh, penetration. Also, the 330 alpha damage is really nice. This is more than a lot of the tier 7 heavy tanks. Um, of course, not the IS with the 390, but the IS uh, tanks don't get the 190 millimeters of penetration. And now we end up with two things that are really bad about the gun. The accuracy 0.42 is just atrocious and the aim time of 3.3 is also atrocious. But if we take a look at the 150mm, uh, these stats are even worse. 0.56 accuracy, which is just, it is just atrocious. Even though it doesn't really matter, you, you don't really have to aim at, at weak spots of enemy tanks. Still, if you have to snipe with a derp gun, there is a very big chance that the shot will just miss. Also, a very bad aim time of 3.5 seconds. This being said though, I don't like the derp gun on the Oni because of these reasons. I'd rather have a little bit more DPM uh, and a, yeah, a pretty much a guaranteed penetration. That is, that's where I go for. If you're the guy that says, no, I want to have um, almost a certainty of doing damage with every shot, then of course you should mount the 150mm. But I think it is just not worth it uh, to lose that many gun statistics at tier 7. Uh, at tier 8 though, as you can see, I have mounted the derp gun. But that's just because I think that on the OHO, um, there's also a 10cm gun, but it doesn't even get premium rounds as you can see. And the statistics of the 105 and the OHO or, and on the ONI are very comparable. But um, on the ONI, I would not really recommend the derp gun. But if you're not a very experienced player and you don't know about the weak spots of tanks, of course the derp gun will be a very good choice of yours. And of course with good crew skills and equipment, all the accuracy and the aim time will go down to 2.8 and 3.9 as you can see right here. Also thing that is really good about this tank is its gun depression. You get 10 degrees of gun depression. But as you can see you do need this because this tank is so tall almost any other tank would just park next to you and uh, you will still not be able to hit them even though you've got 10 degrees of gun depression. Luckily I've never had this to happen though. Um, but still, it is very important that this tank gets 10 degrees of gun depression. Let me see, even um, if a Skoda T40 for instance goes stands next to you, let's see how big this tank is. See, um, it, is it is very probable that, the, that the, the, the Oni will not even be able to hit the Skoda if it's standing next to it. So that's why it's that important that this thing gets 10 degrees of gun depression. I quickly came to the tanks.gg website just to check if the gun depression of the Oni is 10 degrees all around the tank and as we can see only at the front because of the little gun turrets on the front of the Oni uh, the gun depression decreases to only 9 degrees but still 9 degrees of gun depression is a very good amount but just keep that in mind if there's a tank in front of you you've got 1 degree less gun depression over the front of the tank. So this brings us up to the conclusion about the gun. Is this a good gun for a tier 7 heavy tank. Um, no it is not really in my opinion. I don't really like these really inaccurate guns. Um, it is a gun that is of course really well capable of having good results because this alpha damage is really good for its tier. But just because of these statistics um, and the rate of fire is also not great, I'm not going to say that this is a really good gun. Um, this, is, this is a gun that sometimes behaves really weirdly on the battlefield. Anyway, that being said though, let's now take a look at its armor and really uh, look into what makes the Oni so special. Hello, you people know a lot about trucks. Thank you very much. So if we take a look at the armor of the Oni in the garage, we can see that the statistics provide uh, are provided here. This thing gets a lot of hit points, which is really nice, 1550, which is more than a tiger, of course, which is really nice. You do really need those hit points, because the armor is, of course, not impenetrable, but we'll come back to that later. As we can see, uh, the statistics in the garage tell us that this tank gets 175mm on the front of the tank, and as you can see, this is a little bit angled, and we'll be taking a look at the tanks.gg model in a second, but as you can see, it is angled, so you know that effectively... This uh, armor on the front will be thicker than 175, but we'll come back to that later. The side is the weakest of the tank, it's only 70mm, and as you can see this is a huge side profile. 
So if you want to take out an Oni, as I said, just park next to it and you'll be able to just shoot it, this thing in the side repeatedly. Even this thing with its 10 degrees of gun depression will not be able to hit you, I think, if it's standing right next to you. That being said though, uh, a thing that makes these Japanese heavy tanks really good as well is the rear armor. This thing gets 150mm as well. It's the same as the OI at tier 6. It gets the same frontal armor as the same rear armor, which I think is just ridiculous. Anyway, the Oni still gets a very good amount for its tier 150mm, which is just enough to bounce lower to your targets. And I found this really useful when I was uh, being very aggressive. Also in one of my stream highlights you can see that I am bouncing the Skoda T25 on my ass. So also here the side again, again the 70mm. So pretty much the side armor is where you want to go if you want to kill this. Anyway, turret armor also very strong, 175 on the front, 150 on the sides and rear, which is just ridiculous. If you're shooting an Oni, never shoot at its turrets, just don't take the risk. Just aim at its side. Even if this tank angles its tank, this will still be a very easy penetration. 70 millimeters is not a lot at all. A lot of tanks will just be able to putter through this if the Oni just overangles itself a little bit. Now taking a look at the tanks.gg model of the Oni. As we can see the frontal armor is very strong. It is the 175 millimeters on the front which gives you an effective thickness of around 180 to around 215 as we can see. Also here on the front it is 175. But as we go to the angled surfaces we see that they are a little bit thinner. Only 150 millimeters. Still this plate is... Um, 175 again which is good to know but one of the weak points of the only um, not in this angle though but if the only angles is tank are these side plates as you can see these are 150 millimeters but if the only angles is tank this will decrease the angle on these side plates and they will be an easier penetration for you as you can see the dependent the yeah the, the the effective thickness values from 160 to 180 or something like that so if you've got an Oni that is angling its tank really well off you go and you've got 200 millimeters or so just take these side plates here they will be very easily penetratable um, the side armor as you can see really big fat profile there's a little bit of spaced armor here but I don't think it is ever going to uh, absorb a shot for you uh, at least it never worked for me um, this is the first time I ever see this uh, spaced armor plate here as well but still here we get the turret armor as we can see the one uh, the 200 millimeters on the front I don't know if this is a bug or anything uh, maybe a, a small mistake but in the garage it says 175 but apparently this is 200 millimeters here the gun mantlet which is of course really good there's not a Russian gun mantlet as you can see where the values just go to ridiculous amounts but still uh, 200 millimeters on the front it is very flat so it will not get uh, improved very much here the side of the turret 150 millimeters it is angled so this armor plate will be very thick indeed so it is very probable that you will bounce shots off, off here so as you can see the top of the tank of course there's a, that doesn't really get um, this plate in the garage but as you can see it is really weak 60 millimeters uh, it doesn't really matter if this is 30 or 60 yeah, of course, overmatching will start to play a role, but uh, this 60 millimeters will easily be penetrated by artillery, and this is just a, a huge target. So, that's pretty much all that's gonna be said about the armor. So guys, this is the first game I'm going to show you in the only. Of course, this is uh, probably the ideal situation for this tank. We are a top tier heavy tank and as we can see there are a lot of tier 6's on the enemy team and not a lot of tier 7's. So how do you want to play the Oni? First of all you can see the mobility is bad, the gun is very inaccurate and bad. Uh, the only thing that is good about this tank is the armor. So what do you want to do is always try to develop a close range fight. Close range fights will be ideal for the Oni. Uh, because at that range you can't really miss uh, and then the inaccurate gun statistics um, really get mitigated a little bit so 
always try to get close up fights. But um, another problem is where are you going to try and develop that close range fight? Well at Sacred Valley it is very easy of course. Um, and what you always want to be thinking about a tank that has uh, armor as its speciality. Uh, you always want to be thinking about uh, tanks that can penetrate you. So you're taking a look at the enemy tanks list. Okay, what tanks can penetrate me frontally if I angle my armor? KV-3? No, no chance, even with the top gun. I think the A44 gets around uh, 190, if I'm not mistaken. So this guy has a chance to penetrate me. Uh, Jack Panther gets 200 uh, millimeters of penetration, so he is able to penetrate me. But still, I'm going this flank, because uh, it is very likely that the Jack Panther will not be on this flank. And as you can see, I am right. Also, the A44 is on this side of the map. So there is pretty much no chance that any enemy tank will be able to penetrate me in this situation. That's what that's the thinking process that you want to have every game you play in the Oni you, when you are in a top tier matchup. I will also show a bottom tier game to show you what, the, what you need to be thinking right there. But right now, let's take a look at how the Oni um, ticks on this KV-3. Also, there's a box tank. Still, you will not be able to penetrate me. Bit unlucky there, but I just should have uh, aimed it in uh, first person mode just to be safe. But as you can see, I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid of these enemy tanks at all. I know that the box tank will not be able to penetrate me anyway. They gave you three panics a shot. Not that that matters really. But um, I'm just going to start to putting shots into the upper plate of this guy. And as this tank is so tall, uh, there's just absolutely no problem for me. And now the KV-3 gets a really lucky shot off. Let's quickly take a look at that. We saw at tanks.gg that this is 150 millimeters. And as he was shooting at me in an angle, this meant that this was uh, very close to 150 millimeters. He might have also high rolled with his penetration, but he managed to penetrate me. So that's one of the only points that the KV-3 managed to penetrate me. But if I were that KV-3, I would never um, yeah, try and aim at that spot. Every time I would, uh, I would try to hit the Oni. If I was that KV-3, I would just try to flank this tank. Because that's just how to take down this tank. But still, the KV-3 is flanked by my team and by me. And will be able to take him down. So now there's just these tier 5 tanks. And I'm not afraid of these at all. Not even a little bit. Just put a clean shot through the OI experimental. That is probably the most dangerous tank at the moment. He's got the most penetration. He will never be able to penetrate my front though. But I'm still going to take him out because he's just a little fat snack for me. Also this KV-1. He's got the derp gun so he will be able to do damage to me anyway. If he manages to take a shot off. And of course I leave him on 8 hit points. But I'm going to ram him now to save myself a shot. He doesn't even get a shot off luckily. So as we can see we only lost health to that KV-3. Because of the yeah, well aimed shot I guess. So, there's this Cromwell here now. He is not playing the Cromwell like he should. But that doesn't matter for me because I'll just be able to put a shot in here. So, now the close range fight is pretty much over. And we're going to see a little bit of what longer range engagements here. Sometimes the shots just go perfectly where you aim them. Um, like that shot on the SU-100. But aiming at weak, at weak spots you can pretty much forget that with the Oni at range. But you see how, how much that shell deviated from my from my aim there. That was just ridiculous. Anyway, I know that neither of these tanks can penetrate me. So I'm just going to take the damaging shots first. To just let them uh, uh, hit me a little bit more if you know what I mean. Just to get some greedy damage blocked. Because I'll just be able to here. And unfortunately somebody else manages to take down the, yeah, the VK before I can. So I don't think I'll be able to get any more damage out of this game so i hope you guys understood how you should play the oni this is a very um tank that yeah that, that, that depends a lot on the enemy team and on the map that it plays on so let's now take a look at a bottom tier game and see what you need to do there to try and have the best result so as we can see guys we are now on a bottom tier game this is one of the games i played at my live stream and as you can see uh, not a very happy about this matchmaking because as we can see a lot of um, tier 8 and 9 heavy tanks and tanks on the enemy team what am I saying I don't even know 
doesn't matter. So, how do you start playing a, t a bottom tier game in the Oni? Well, you start with the same principle. You look at the enemy team list and you, and you look to see what tanks are going to be able to penetrate me. Well, as we can see, a lot of the enemy team, pretty much 75% or even more, will be able to penetrate the Oni. Because, yeah, effectively 200 millimeters of armor uh, and a lot of enemy tanks have got um, even 295 millimeters of penetration if the 230 is using the, the 155 millimeter gun. But I will just always think about the worst uh, in this tank. So as you can see, I'm spotted already and I'm just getting shot at. But still, um, where are they likely to go? That's the, that's the third step you want, to, you want to do. Yeah, you don't really know on this map because you don't really know what tanks spawn here. But how do you want to play in a bottom tier game? As uh, sometimes more than 80% of the tanks can just easily penetrate you and your armor counts for nothing. You pretty much want to be taking opportunistic shots all the time, whenever you can. That's just how to play the only in bottom tier games. It is not a very um, nice tank to play in bottom tier games. Because as you can see, yeah, they will just be able to penetrate you all day, mostly. So, your armor counts for nothing, as I said. Just try to take opportunistic shots. And that's when the, the really bad accuracy and gun statistics of this Oni are going to um, make you have a bad day. As you can see, I'm playing with Capsulus, which is one of my great viewers out there. If you're watching this review, thank you so much for playing with the stream with me. But as you can see, he's got the derp gun mounted. And in bottom tier games, of course, the derp gun is much more probable to use than... Um, than the the 105 millimeter because it doesn't really matter if you uh, if you don't uh, if you if you're going to hit a, a tank that you can't penetrate because you just have to hit the tank and it will still do damage. So if you uh, get into bottom tier games a lot, you might consider uh, taking the 105 uh, the 150 millimeter gun just to have that certainty of doing damage every time you hit. And that's a thing that is not um, very good about this tank. So as we can see, this tank doesn't have a great reverse speed and I will never be able to turn my tank around to have a good shot at the T-44. Uh, so what I do, I reverse angle and I just put a shot right into his ass. And this is just how to play bottom tier game. That was an opportunistic shot and I will now just um, try to trade. I see that the ass of the T-30 is here, so I'm going to put a clean shot into there. As he's not aiming at me, there will not be any problems for me right there. I'll just uh, use my health whenever I can to trade shots because yeah, I'm a, I'm a bottom tier tank. It doesn't really matter if I die in this matchup. At least at this point, it doesn't really matter. A T44, one of the only tanks that is probably not going to be able to penetrate me with this 175 um, standard penetration on the on the Vegas Gunnigan mount. Really lucky bounce there from the M103. I have no idea where that shot managed to bounce off my armor. But still, it bounced. I am not complaining about that. But even an M103, if he's not driving around the corner foolishly and just snapshotting, if he just aimed at anywhere in the front of my tank, he could have easily gone through me. So there's an Oni with my 190 millimeters. I know that I'm shooting down on his armor and I will be able to penetrate him. Even with this 190 millimeters penetration. So if you manage to engage an enemy Oni, with the 105 mil, if you've got that mounted, then you'll be able to penetrate him. But as you can see, Capsulus makes a small mistake there. Yeah, a, a small mistake. It's a mistake that costs him a tank. He peeks out without angling, and he um, yeah loses his tank for it. But you might be saying, Tokrev, what the hell? You're doing the same thing right now. Because yeah, I am doing the same thing. But I re what I wanted to do right here was to try and um, just put a shot into the M103's turret because I know he had fired and um, as I said we are not uh, top tier tanks here anyway we're one of the biggest tanks in the game and the whole city is lost so it was just a matter of time before we were going to die but still doing 2600 damage almost in a tier 9 game is a very good result for a tier 6 tank also especially when we managed to put a shot into that M103 turret Doing damage to tier 9 tanks, of course, really um, gets you some XP out of this. But as you can see, the T30 manages to take us down. 
this, yeah, the T30 is just never going to pounce on Domi. Even if he was if he had mounted the 120 mm, which still gets 250 mm of penetration, he would easily still be able to go through me. So now a quick only summary. It is a very big sluggish tier 7 Japanese heavy tank as we can see. It has got armor that is only capable of bouncing tanks that have not got more than uh, 200 mm of penetration or even less. Um, because yeah the armor is, is not that reliable against 200 mm of penetration. But at 175 it will be easy, easily be able to uh, bounce those shots if you angle the tank well. It has got a really inaccurate bad gun in my opinion. The 330 alpha damage is probably one of the only things that is good about the tank. Um, also the 10 degrees of gun depression is really nice and the very big amount of hit points of course. So also this tank gets armor that is only capable of really working in top tier matchups as I said. It is very sluggish. Uh, is this your type of tank? I don't know, you have to decide that for yourself. But because I'm a tank collector and I pretty much want to have every tank in the game in my garage, this is a very nice piece of uh, metal that I want to have in my garage as well. So let me know what you think about Doni in the comments down below. I'm really interested to hear if this review helped you out because this is one of my first ones in I think around a year. Let me know if, the, uh, if my tank reviews are still that much wanted because if that is the case I will try to do more of these. Um, as I said in previous reviews, these, these take a lot of time to make, so please consider leaving a like down below, it really helps me out um, and it really uh, motivates me to make more of these tank reviews if you want them to see them, of course. So, that's pretty much it. I'd like to thank you so much for watching, leave a like because I did put a lot of time into making this video and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next tank review slash video. Bye guys.